Dirk Nowitzki is officially a Hall of Famer, a much-deserved honor for a player that changed the game of basketball forever. No one knew at the time that a relatively unknown prospect from Germany would pioneer a whole generation of stretch bigs in the NBA. Now we have a large number of centers shooting threes at extremely high clips, which wouldn't have been possible if stretch fours like Dirk didn't start the trend. But how did eight teams pass on a future MVP and Hall of Famer in Dirk Nowitzki? Well, let's take a look all the way back to the 1998 NBA Draft, see the eight players drafted before Nowitzki, find out how their careers panned out, and discover where they are now. Let's get into it. At number one, we have Michael Oluwokandi. He spent five seasons with the Clippers, and he had his best season in 2003 with the Clippers, averaging 12.3 points, 9.1 rebounds, and 2.2 blocks per game. He also spent two and a half seasons with Minnesota, one and a half seasons with Boston, then he retired in 2007 after a relatively injury-plagued career after his fourth season. He's kept his life very private since, and he has no social media, so I'm not entirely sure what he's been up to now, but his ex-wife, uh, Susie Ketchum, became a star on the TV show Basketball Wives, and Olo Kondi was rumored by Quentin Richardson and Shaq to have moved to London, but that's pretty much it. Other than that, it's kind of relatively unknown what he's doing now, but hopefully he's been successful in his post-NBA career. At number two, we have Mike Bibby. He spent three seasons with the Vancouver Grizzlies, then six and a half seasons with Sacramento, and he had his best season in 2006 where he averaged 21.1 points and 5.4 assists on 38.6% from three. Then he was traded to the Hawks during the 2008 season. Then he was with Atlanta for two and a half more seasons. Then he was traded to Washington and then was either waived or traded to Miami during the 2011 season, then played in the 2012 season with the Knicks and retired shortly after. He's been highly involved in basketball since his retirement. He's coached his son in AAU. He became a high school basketball coach. He also graduated from UNLV in 2017 with a bachelor's degree. He also played for the Big Three, and he's gone into bodybuilding and most recently became a head coach of a new basketball league called Fan Controlled Hoops, which is a 4v4 basketball league with mostly former college and NBA players trying to get more exposure. At number three, we have Rafe LaFrance. He spent three and a half seasons with Denver, then one and a half seasons with Dallas, and he had his best season overall in 2002 with Denver and Dallas, where he put up 13 and a half points, 7.4 rebounds, and 2.7 blocks on 45.8% from the field and 38.8% from three. Then he was with Boston for three seasons, Portland for two seasons, and he played his last season in 2008 at the age of 31. He was inducted into the Kansas Sports Hall of Fame in 2011, started a family after he retired from basketball and had four sons, and according to Wikipedia, he joined the Decorah High School basketball team in Decorah, Iowa as an assistant coach in 2020. At number four, we have Anton Jameson. He spent his first five seasons with Golden State, and he had his highest scoring season in his third year, where he averaged 24.9 points per game. Then he spent the 04 season with Dallas, then spent five and a half seasons with Washington, which was the best stretch of his career. He averaged 20.5 points per game on 39% from three in 06, and back to back seasons in 08 and 09, averaging 21.4 points per game and then 22.2 points per game. After that, he spent two and a half seasons with Cleveland. Then he spent the 2013 season with the Lakers, and then he spent his last season in 2014 with the LA Clippers. He was one of only two players to score over 20,000 points without being inducted into the Hall of Fame, but he was elected into the College Basketball Hall of Fame in 2021. He was recently on Vince Carter's podcast, The VC Show, to discuss his alma mater, UNC, and other things in the basketball world. Now he is a director of pro personnel for the Washington Wizards, according to Wikipedia. He also holds an all-star basketball camp every year for the youth and also has two daughters and two sons. At number five, we have Vince Carter. He spent six and a half seasons with Toronto. Then he had his best season in 2001, where he averaged 27.6 points per game, five and a half rebounds, 3.9 assists, 1.5 steals, and 1.1 blocks on 46% from the field and 40.8% from three. Then he spent four and a half seasons with New Jersey, one and a half seasons with Orlando, a half season with Phoenix, Dallas for three seasons, Memphis for three seasons, Sacramento for one. Then he spent his last two years in the NBA at age 42 and 43 with Atlanta. He retired at age 43 when the pandemic started in March of 2020. Then he became an NBA analyst after retirement. He has his own podcast on ESPN, as I mentioned earlier, the VC show. And he routinely goes on NBA Today and other basketball segments on various ESPN shows. At number six, we have Robert Trailer. He spent two seasons with Milwaukee, then one with Cleveland, and had his best season averaging 5.7 points, 4.3 rebounds, and 1.1 
blocks. Then he spent one season with the Charlotte Hornets, then two with the New Orleans Hornets, and then he spent his last NBA season back with Cleveland in 2005. Unfortunately though, he passed away on May 11, 2011 after suffering a heart attack inside his home in Isla Vida, Puerto Rico. He was playing professional basketball there and had just won Defensive Player of the Year the previous season. At number 7, we have Jason Williams. He spent three seasons with Sacramento, four with Memphis, and had his best overall season in 2002, where he averaged 14.8 points, 8 assists, and 1.7 steals. After that, he spent three seasons with the Miami Heat, then retired in 2008, then actually came back in the 2010 season with Orlando, then he played another season with Orlando and Memphis in 2011. He's also been heavily involved with basketball during his retirement. He recently filmed a video with The Professor in November 2022, where he showed the professor his famous elbow pass. He's also played in the NBA Celebrity All-Star Game a few times over the past five to six years, and has played in the Big Three League, and then also he has a wife and three children. And lastly, at number eight, we have Larry Hughes. He spent one and a half seasons with Philadelphia, two and a half with Golden State, then three with Washington. He had his best season in 2005 with Washington, where he averaged 22 points, 6.3 rebounds, 4.7 assists, and 2.9 steals. Then after that, he spent two seasons with Cleveland. Then he spent the 08 season with Cleveland and Chicago, the 09 season with Chicago and New York, and the 010 season with New York and Charlotte. He was unsigned in 2011. Then he played nine games with Orlando in the 2012 season. He now has a wife and four children, and his son Larry Hughes Jr. actually plays basketball at St. Louis University, which is Larry Hughes' alma mater. He also holds a basketball academy for all kids in K-12th through grade. He was also inducted into the Missouri Sports Hall of Fame in 2021, and also a fun fact, he is actually Jason Tatum's godfather. So that was what happened to the eight players drafted before Dirk Nowitzki. If you guys have any suggestions for what I should do next, let me know down below. Always like making these types of videos and adding on to this series. This is probably my favorite series to make, if I'm being honest. I love doing the research and love talking about these types of things in the NBA. So with that being said, hope you enjoyed. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.